Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Frank, and I'd like to thank you for supporting this channel. And if you haven't already, uh, you can click the uh, subscribe button here and go ahead and like the video. And we'll come out with more as time goes by. Well, today I'd like to bring you this really special presentation because uh, out of Spain, just now out of Spain, uh, there was some research that was done that basically shows that vitamin D is absolutely critical for COVID-19 patients. And so, so once we cover this, then I'm gonna cover uh, briefly why vitamin D works. It's not like a drug, it's a nutrient. So I'll show you how, how it gets its nutrient effect. And then we'll go into other vitamins like zinc, magnesium, and vitamin A, and why are they critical uh, for these patients as well. So here we go, just uh, starting out, we'll just hit the highlights in case you don't have time to see the whole video, you'll at least get the highlights. Well, highlight number one is uh, 930 patients were enrolled in the study in Spain. And again, uh, thank you very much, Spain, for doing this research. It's going to definitely help the rest of the world uh, with this terrible disease. So we definitely want to thank you for that. Uh, so 930 patients, and they were uh, the, the group that received vitamin D, and this is the most critical point that I could make, is that they were not given vitamin D3, which is what we take uh, when we go to the store, we buy vitamin D3. This is not vitamin D3. And the reason they didn't give vitamin D3 is vitamin D3 gets converted into calcifidiol in the liver. And in critically ill patients, they don't have two weeks, sometimes more, especially if they're critical, uh, to convert from D3 to the uh, semi-active and then into the active. So this step is done for them, which is absolutely probably the why this uh, study turned out so well, was because of using calcifidiol. And another factor is vitamin D3 is fat soluble. And uh, if you're having trouble bringing in your fats, you're not going to absorb it as easily. So by using calcifidiol, that's 100% absorbable, gets in really quick. So uh, way to go. This was a, a great use of this. Now, you can't buy this. I don't believe you can buy this over the counter. So if you're sick, you'll have to go to the hospital to get this um, calcifidiol. Now, giving calcifidiol... 64% uh, less deaths in the hospital. So when they gave it, uh, it decreased the death rate significantly. Not only that, it also decreased admissions to the ICU because they gave it on admission and it kept 82% less admissions to the ICU. So basically 82% uh, less people got critical and had to go to the ICU. So again, uh, just to wrap up the highlights, I don't think any more vitamin D research needs to be done, especially with COVID-19, because uh, I think it's unethical because of the amount of people that will die in the control group. Uh, I, don't, I, I think that's unnecessary at this point. Uh, you know, we know enough now, and I'm sure uh, in the next few months, everybody's gonna pick this up and it's gonna be standard uh, within the hospital. Uh, you know, I know I used to be a registered nurse. And I worked in the hospital and uh, I would definitely want this <laughs> as a tool in my toolbox when you're treating these patients because you want to see them get better. So I'm sure this is just going to, uh, you know, just get all over and utilized in, in the hospitals, at least in the United States. I'm pretty confident that's going to happen. Okay, so what we're going to do is, that's the highlights. Uh, if you want to stick around the next few minutes, we're going to go over the rest of the presentation, which is uh, going deeper into this uh, study. So all patients receive the same medical care. And 551 patients received 20,000 international units of calcifidiol. Now, again, that's the converted uh, form. It's not vitamin D3, they would have had to give approximately over 100,000 international units of vitamin D to get the equivalent of what they gave as calcifidiol, because a lot of that is not absorbed, 
because it's fat soluble and you know the conversion in the liver. Uh, so basically, it's it's not one to one ratio. Ten thousand was given day three, seven, fifteen, and thirty. Now I want to point out that in the original Spanish study that this study is uh, bound uh, the uh, uh, based on that they gave three day three seven and 14 and every week after that. So this actually goes 15 and 30, okay, days, but it doesn't give the 21, uh, uh, so it gives less, less dosages. And plus the original study may have given even more dosages, we don't know, they didn't say, but this only gives one, two, three, four, five, uh, dosages, which I think the study may have been better had they given more uh, dosages and brought it to the original study. It might have gotten better results. Okay, so nonetheless, 36 people died of the 551, 36, which is 6.5 percent deaths, and 30 or 5.4 admissions to the ICU. Okay, now let's compare that to the 379 that did not give vitamin D. And, and I applaud them that they put more in the, uh, the group that received the life saving uh, vitamin D instead of you know, less in the death uh, group. So that, that, that was a, uh, <laughs> a good benefit there. But of the 379 that they didn't give vitamin D to, there were 57 deaths, a 15% uh, of the 15% of the total died by not giving vitamin D. That's why there were 64% total less deaths uh, getting the vitamin D. Now of the, the 80 or 21% went to the ICU. Now, what I think was phenomenal in this study is when they went to the ICU, uh, they took some compassion on them because they gave 50 of those that went to the ICU, vitamin D because they knew of the life-saving properties. But once they got to critical, that 50 that received the vitamin D at that point, it's too late at that point. So obviously the best is take it before you get to the hospital. So take it preventatively and get your levels up so that it's uh, your, your immune system can fight uh, this virus early on, but giving it in the hospital giving it in the calcifidiol form, okay, obviously. And uh, so that led to uh, increase in survival. So that's just the highlights of the study. Now, again, I want to point out, this is the original study that they did uh, with only 76 patients. And uh, they gave it day three, seven, and weekly. So this, they actually received more dosages in this study. And, uh, but to make an even better study, if they gave it daily, that would be even better. So that, that might get better results. But, uh, so how exactly does vitamin D get the result? Is, is it a drug? No, it's not a drug, it's a vitamin. And it works like a vitamin. So I'm gonna show you how that is. So SARS-CoV-2 comes in the cell, comes in the cell, it hijacks the mitochondria, okay? When it hijacks the mitochondria, they cannot produce as much energy because the mitochondria produce most of your energy. So if your energy producing mechanism in your body gets hijacked and it can't produce as much energy, you're, you're gonna have less uh, innate and adaptive immune response just because you have less energy. Well, think about it. When you get super tired when you get COVID-19, that's because it's zapping your mitochondria and it makes them dysfunctional. So you get more inflammation. So that in itself, now where does the clotting come from? Well, when SARS-CoV-2 comes in specifically to attack the mitochondria, now when it attacks the mitochondria and the platelets, the platelets become dysfunctional, they start clotting. So how does vitamin D help with this? Vitamin D is basically uh, survival for your mitochondria. So it, 
it uh, uh, creates less dysfunctional mitochondria and may save you. But obviously, there, there's a point of no return. If you end up in the ICU, you're not going to uh, you know, survive as well. Now, uh, OK, so what I want to do is quickly, without vitamin D, your immune system can function. So you can fight the rhinovirus, RSV, and influenza just fine without vitamin D. Now, the older you get, the less this functions uh, anyway. So down here, we're going to show that with vitamin D, this system functions a lot better, especially in the critically ill and the older people that are succumbing to COVID-19. So down here, this system is ramped up even better. So you're going to clear virus a lot faster and a lot better by giving vitamin D, especially in those critically ill that have more of a chance to have this overshoot of the IL-6 and create the cytokine storm. So vitamin D is critical for these patients' immune function. And again, if you have the, the COVID-19 here, it's coming in, it's trying to produce more IL-6 by turning on this gene that turns on IL-6. And uh, um, so it turns on that gene. Now, vitamin D shuts this system off, therefore for, uh, decreasing the cytokine storm. So those are two ways in which vitamin D, there's more, but those are two ways in which it basically helps you survive. Now, vitamin D is just one player in this whole cascade of events uh, because vitamin D is like the winding in a watch. So if I'm trying to fix a watch, uh, I'm going to replace the mechan the part of the mechanism that's broken, right? Because they're all, all uh, necessary in working the functions of the watch, the spring, uh, the gears, everything works together. So vitamins and minerals work the same way. Uh, vitamin D what would be what winds the watch. Uh, zinc is the main gear, okay? Magnesium helps with the winding of the spring, so without that, vitamin D is useless. And vitamin A allows the spring to work, so they really all work together. So my point is here, what if we would have given in that original study uh, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin A? Well, I'm going to show you why that would have maybe helped this study out. So here's zinc. Zinc is absolutely critical for COVID-19. I put the uh, research down here so you can look it up. But basically, uh, in my first video, I went into detail on how vitamin D works with the epithelial tissue. Well, here zinc works with the epithelial tissue as well and helps with the gap junctions and keeps the gap junction strong and helps the cilia uh, beat the mucus out of the lungs. So that's how zinc functions with vitamin D. It also, zinc slows down the replication of SARS-CoV-2. So no matter what, you want zinc on board. Antiviral effect, so it kicks in the immune system to work that much harder. And it decreases the inflammation, which is part of the cytokine storm. So just like vitamin D, vi uh, zinc is necessary for fighting COVID-19. And I think I just saw a study out where uh, lower vitamin or lower zinc levels are higher risk for vitamin or for COVID-19. So zinc is a key player. Had they given zinc in this study, they would have gotten a lot better result because of the synergy. What about uh, magnesium? To get from vitamin D3, which is what we make in the skin, it goes to the liver, it's converted into the 25-OH or calcidiol, it needs magnesium. So if you don't have magnesium, you can't make that conversion. And uh, subsequently, you can't take the 25-OH or the calcidiol and turn it into calcitriol or the 125-OH without magnesium. So magnesium is critically important in these critical patients. Vitamin A. 
Well, you know how uh, vitamin D has to attach to the D DNA to transcribe a lot of these proteins like the calcedins, the defensins. Uh, if you do not have uh, vitamin A, vitamin D can't marry up with vitamin A and do its job of uh, turning on your genes at the gene level. So vitamin A is critically important, just as critically important as vitamin D. Uh, that may be why in nature, vitamin D is found with vitamin A, vitamin A in cod liver oil, for example. So uh, to sum it up, each uh, uh, immune cell here needs a different set of nutrients to function optimally. So just like you have a watch, you need to have all these mechanisms in place to have a functioning immune system. So that's why they're all needed together, not just like we're gonna throw in vitamin D and do an experiment. I mean, I'm surprised it turned out as well as it did without having all of the vitamins and minerals that you need. So what's the take home message? Well, the take home message is vitamins and minerals work in synergy. Okay, obviously, vitamin D is the main key player and I take 10,000 I use each day for prevention. Because, you know, uh, if you have a fire, isn't it better to put it out before it gets blazing? You know, here's like, you know, showing up to the hospital and you've got, uh, you know, full-blown COVID infection so that you need to go to the hospital. Well, why not start taking it over here to prevent it? So that's why I take 10,000 each day. Now talk to your doctor, a different dosage might be uh, better for your situation, but that's how much I take preventatively. Uh, remember, 10 to 20,000 you'll get from the sun. So this is just a sun dose. Hospitalized patients need calcifediol, not D3 or cholecalciferol, which is what we take in the store. So once you have COVID-19, probably you need to be taking the calcifediol form uh, if you're sick. Uh, this just won't work as well. Vitamin D, zinc, and magnesium, and vitamin A are all necessary to work together. So that's why, you know, I take these on a regular basis just to keep my immune system functioning healthy. Well, again, thank you very much for uh, watching this presentation. And if you haven't, go ahead and like and subscribe the video so you can see more videos that come out. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Take care.